This week, physicists studying an exotic metal have uncovered new evidence proving the existence of Pine's Demon. No, this isn't the plot of a recent D&D movie starring Chris Pine where he attempted to defeat a demonic army. This is a previously theorised but assumed impossible to find quasi-particle that is speculated to play an important role in determining electronic behaviour of a wide variety of metals, potentially even superconductors, which I'm sure you've heard absolutely nothing about recently. Let's start with what we know. In 1956, theoretical physicists as David Pines made a prediction. He imagined a solid material like the metal in a coin and within it lots of different energy levels that electrons could occupy. You can think of these like different floors in a building where the electrons are the people moving between them. Now sometimes these electrons can start moving together in harmony, almost like a synchronized dance. When they do this they create what we as physicists call plasmons. It's a combined effect of all these electrons moving together and it usually only happens over an entire material at very specific temperatures and conditions. You can think of these as a wave, but physicists like to think of them as a particle or a quasi-particle. As the electrons dance back and forward, because they are charged and have mass, you could expect to see and measure charge and mass redistributing on the metal. This also would take energy to keep everyone moving in step, which should also be detectable. But what if, instead of dancing in perfect sync, some groups of electrons started dancing just a bit out of step with others on different floors? When a very specific type of this out of step dance happened in solids with different energy levels, this could create a unique kind of plasmon, as these movements would essentially cancel out the overall motion or charge distribution across the whole metal. This plasmon is special because it would have zero weight or mass and wouldn't carry any electrical charge. This could mean that it could exist at any temperature and that it would be there but wouldn't be detectable. This distinct electron motion or DEM pines coined as the demon particle. And as the particle has no mass, Pines believed that it could form even at room temperature or below, and may play an important role in the electronic transition in room temperature superconductors. But for the past 67 years, Pines' prediction remained just a prediction. But that was about to change. But before I explain how, I first need to thank today's sponsor, Incogni, who is also out there finding and fighting demons on behalf of all of us. This morning, I got an email asking me to confirm my purchase of a pig roasting cookout set for delivery to Queensland, Australia. I live in the UK. According to a 2022 report by the Identity Theft Resource Centre, the number of victims of identity theft has gone up by nearly 50% over the last two years. The likelihood of your data getting breached is constantly also increasing. Data brokers are out there aggregating and selling your data to the highest bidder. These sites can expose you as a result to a range of dangers including identity theft, to people making purchases in your name, to other online scams. Getting your data out of these systems sometimes feels like a full-time job, which is why Incogni reaches out to data brokers on your behalf, requests your personal data removed, and deals with any objections from their side. I've just signed up and for the first 100 people to use the code Dr. Ben in the link down below, they will get 60% off Incogni. To help keep your information safe online, sign up now and thank you to Incogni for supporting the channel. Now, back to the video. Most experiments use light to excite and measure the movement of these plasmon waves across metals, but as the demon particle has no charge, it can't be excited or measured using light. That was until research team led by Peter Abermont, a physics professor in Illinois, started investigating strontium ruthenate. While Abermont and his team were trying to explain why strontium ruthenate is so similar to superconductors without actually being a superconductor itself, the team were using a technique called Momentum Resolved Electron Energy Loss Spectroscopy, or mm, EELS, weird I know, to directly observe the plasmon features of the material. M EELS fires electrons at metal samples to observe plasmonic and other features of the metal by measuring the electron energy as these electrons bounce off the material. When they looked at the dataset that they produced, they found an electronic mode in the material that had no mass. Confused as this particle was too fast to be a bulk sound wave moving through the material and was too slow to be a surface sound wave moving through the material, the team began to dig deeper into the data. They found a particle with two electron bands that were oscillating out of phase at almost equal amplitude to each other. They had found evidence of Pine's demon particle. 
Initially, the team actually laughed off the idea that what they were observing was the demon particle in action as coming across this phenomenon so difficult to detect without even looking for it in the first place seemed like an absolute impossibility to them. Now, why do these sorts of demon particles actually strike interest into the heart of physicists? Mostly because recently there has been a lot of conjecture that demon particles may play an important role in superconductivity, a subject we still don't really understand, particularly in high temperature superconducting applications. These particles might play a role in allowing the movement of electricity through a superconductor without any resistance, as there is no net movement or charge or mass associated with these plasmons. The standard theory for superconductors is called BCS theory, and it suggests that superconductivity emerges when quantum scale sound waves known as phonons create electron pairs known as Cooper pairs, fundamentally altering their behavior to that of a superfluid. But the authors suggest that Pine's demon may also be involved in nudging electrons together and could be used to better understand and build better superconductors. But they may also play a role in improving the efficiency of other electronics like solar panels or power switches. Obviously this discovery has only just been made, so further study is needed to understand how this demon particle really plays into the realm of superconducting and whether it can be used to enhance our capabilities to build room temperature superconductors. But that is to me the amazing thing about science, fantastic discoveries can strike you even when you're not looking for them. Thanks very much for watching, I'll see you on the next one.